uh, invite uh, Manuela Blanchard from Switzerland for presenting aquatic uh, contact improvisation. Uh, and uh, it is nice to see you again. Uh, I remember we, uh, we had your presentation in the International Water Conference in 2010 in Poland. And uh, uh, it is really nice to reconnect and, and uh, hear uh, the news about your work. So Manuela, uh, and the audience is yours. Yes, hello everybody. Uh, I'm happy to see you, hello. Uh, thank you for giving me uh, the opportunity to speak about my work. And I thought uh, I would like to show you a few uh, videos about my work because it's more concrete for other people who don't know the dance in water. And just before I tell you a few words how I came to that, I'm uh, originally a synchronized swimmer. I've been doing that in my teenage and I really loved that, but it was a really strenuous work. And um, at a certain point I decided to continue to dance on land. And uh, I was exploring different ways to make a work out of dance. And um, I discovered uh, by chance Watsu. And then it was a fascination and I started the whole education. So I did uh, water dance teaching and uh, healing dance, etc. the whole certification way. And as soon as I started, I, I thought it would be so nice to have more interaction. I, I mean, there is interaction, obviously, with the people we are giving a session, but I wanted something where I could be more uh, really in dialogue with the person in a subtle way. And uh, for me, it was a new context uh, because uh, with this heat in the water, it was the possibility to be totally relaxed. And I was really fascinating, fascinated by the, the opportunity to be... Uh, I don't know, totally present and in, in a kind of dream state while dancing. So that was a bit my starting point. And first I invited my friends who danced contact improvisation like me to just have a free jam, a free dance in water. And many people get, were getting dizzy, they're moving so fast. So I had the idea that maybe there was something to learn about it. Yes. Yeah, so um yeah i would like to go to the full screen yes okay thank you so now i thought the best is i show you a few videos i like and i saw that colin is online he will be on the line too we have a shared video uh so i would like to show you a few things and i hope you will see my voice while seeing short excerpts of the video so i will share my screen and um yeah we'll go to that so I'd like to start with this one. Do you hear me? Do you still hear my voice? Yes? Okay. So, excuse me, I'm busy with technique. Would like to make it on full screen. Yes. Okay, so this shows a start of a dance. Uh, so it was a dance in the pool. And as you see, our feet are on the ground and we are using the whole body to move the other. And there is no uh, fixed role while we are moving. So uh, it uh, really happens all improvised in connection with the partner. And the game is about how can I move the other, moving my own body, using my falling in the water. And when is the moment where the other will feel the ground again with the feet and will take over? And we can uh, change between having the feet grounded and uh, uh, using our hips, how you see now, like offering a support. We can have some movement which are really close to, to Watsu. And then we switch to other qualities which are more floating and resting. I show you a few other scenes. So um, I decided to not use the music now so that you can uh, 
sorry. Yeah, there is no music so that I can give some comments. So you see there are some spontaneous movements which are really close to when you when you give some water session to someone, but they are all improvised and the person has more tone. And there are some lifts which are really close to contact improvisation on land, but the difference is that we are so light in water, so we can do very different things. It's easy for women to lift men, for example. And at some moment, we are both floating and both pushing and pulling. I hope you can follow me. I chose a few sequences which are more relevant. And what I really liked is how to something very continuous and fluid and have the sense of free fall. So this is a pretty old video. This is like uh, 2012 and it was with a friend, Guillaume Laplane. Show you the last sequence. And it was absolutely not choreographed. It was all uh, created on the spot. Okay. Then let me show you another excerpt. So this one is with Colleen and I seen that he's online too. Hello, Colleen. <laughs> so it, it was happening in a lake in Berlin and Colleen and me, we never met before. So we were busy about finding the perfect place. And then we found this lake. And the friend of us was was filming, but all, as well, no choreography. It was really happening in the moment. And this is very different because the, the water is cold and our feet are not touching the ground. So these are really other conditions. We have to use the support of the body of the other to, to float ourselves. And uh, the breathing is much different, way different, because we stay a long, longer time underwater. But this is also very poetic. We were meeting some fishes and uh, yeah, there is more openness to the absolute unknown. And as you see, we are using some swimming movement as well during the video. It was not so clear water, I'm sorry about that. It was not so easy to film us also, we had to, to have someone who knows free diving. So the video is from Dan Farberov, by the way. I'm switching uh, to another place of the video. Sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah. So I so want you to, to comment that this is a very close way to be with other people. I hope you can still follow me. Just checking the chat. Yeah, okay. Sorry, so now I decide to show you um, something else. Oh, I have to close something, sorry, sorry. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I'm doing the best with technique, sorry, I'm not so used to that. Okay, I wanted to show you as well um, group situation. So this scene is out of, of a workshop. It was in India with a group in Magic Waters. This is with Daria Kusnik, maybe you know her as well. You see a scene of a duet we had. And we had live music, musicians. And as you see, we had some parallel dance happening with these lovely musicians here. 
they were doing live music. So they were improvising their music, watching our movements. And uh, so as you see in a, in a workshop, there are often a phase where after giving a bit an idea of people how to move, how they can move each other's, then you can start to, to relate and to, to see what happens. And sometimes you change partners uh, during the dance, you come closer to other people and you connect with the other people. Okay, I will show you now a, a very last sequence. Sorry. So the last sequence I chose is um, something very close. I wanted to show you how it is uh, when everybody's moving super slowly and it becomes like a whole organism, everyone together. And through the, um, the warm water and the slowness of movement, you can start to stay a very, very long time in water without thinking. And you, you probably feel like you are a fish or a frog, something like that. And you dissolve into some timelessness. And we hear music when our ears are outside, but when we are underwater, we don't hear the music. We hear the music of the collective dance happening. So women and men and women and women, men and men are dancing together. It's not important. Sometimes you don't even know if you have two partners or just one. Okay. Okay, I hope you could follow all that. Did you hear me? <laughs> yes. So yeah, I'm really um, interested if you have some questions. So I also wanted to add something about my work. Uh, so I started to, to teach first dance in water. I call it contact improvisation in water, but I also use some tango in water. And um, now also using it since a few years, I use this method to teach people to give aquatic body work. Because I, I noticed it is very interesting to, to show first how people, how can they move their body, uh, that it feels really like a dance, they are really grounded in water. And out of that, they can create movement and they can take other people in movement. So this is a very easy way and more fun for my taste than trying to do the correct move, move uh, in Watsu. Um, where or what a dance where it takes really a long time to to be a good practitioner, so also um, use the music and and fun, and then I bring some more clarity to people how they can, can support a neck in a safe way, for example. Yeah. So I don't know if there are some questions. I'm open to your questions. If anyone wants to write something in the chat. And um, yeah, I'm also, oh, maybe something I can add. Um, uh, I'm also teaching uh, in the international community. So that's also how I, I met Thomas. I like to, to organize workshops um, in different countries. Sometimes I'm also invited, for example, in Thailand, Portugal, or in, in India. And then I can I have the chance to to dance in free water, you know, in a, in a lake or in a sea, and this is very different. Of course, I'm looking for places where there are not too many waves, and, and um, yeah, it's uh, sometimes we can dance a, a time on land on the beach, and then change. Uh, after experience the ground quality, we can connect with the water. The transition is also very nice. And I'm really doing that because it's something beautiful, artistic and relaxing. I'm not doing that for therapy, but it really works therapeutically. It has an effect on people how, well, how also they learn to connect to other people, to open their heart, to, to be ready to improvise, to be totally present in the moment. 
and to let go of the mind. This is uh, the beauty of it for me. It's a moment I'm perfectly relaxed. <laughs> yeah, so I'm happy. I'm open for questions. I don't know how we can interact if someone wants to say something. We raise a hand if you see it on the screen. So this is a mark that someone wants to ask a question. So my wife has one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, what you showed us. It's really cool because we are dancers too. Uh, so we really like the topic. Uh, but we were wondering uh, how about breathing? Because when you dance on land, Contact uh, uh, yeah, like contact improvisation, you uh, you can control your breath. And when you go into the water situation, and when you are with people, you don't have like a full control because sometimes maybe you think that you need to breathe, but someone will take you to the movement uh, and take you like underwater or something. So how do you deal with this? Okay, yes, that is a very good question. So first, I do it step by step. I, in my workshops, first, I let the people be on their feet and to find stability, uh, to find security also for the people who would be a bit afraid to be the head on the water. Then I take them floating where they still have the, the mouse out of the water. And then I would train something we, maybe that's the same kind we would do in Watsu or water dance technique that you do some bubbles with the mouse and relax and show how to, you can relax your neck and how you switch from underwater to underwater, try the nose clip. I do it not as technically as we do uh, in aquatic body work, but I, I prepare that obviously. And uh, I always tell people, you don't have to push yourself if you feel uncomfortable. You don't have to put your head on the water. I ask people in the group, can you share with me or share with the group if you feel uncomfortable so that no one is uh, totally overwhelmed? But sometimes also emotion happens, yeah. And the, the magic, it's like when you switch from starting from Watsu and uh, you prepare the breathing and then you, you start water dance with the head in the water, uh, the same, it goes step by step. And after a while, the people are impressed because they, they notice, wow, I totally forgot that I had to breathe. And it, it suddenly happened that people stayed one and a half minute and they didn't even think about it. Or people like me and, the Colle and Colleen, for example, in the video on the lake, we are so much used to it that we don't even struggle with that. It gets like, you know, the heart the heartbeat gets slower and slower. And the kind of dance we, we do uh, in opposition with synchronized swimming, where you hold the breath and you really pump and you use all your muscles and this is really sport. So this, this is another way to hold the breath. You have to <gasps> and wait, you know, and count the minutes. But um, there it's very different because the mind switch off, you are in total relaxed state and you don't even think about breathing for most of the people. So I already had people who were quite afraid of putting their head in the water. And at the end of the workshop, within a weekend, they, they feel quite comfortable. Thank you for your question. <laughs> Does someone else have a question? Or a notice uh, through your own experience, maybe? Yeah, so maybe I can uh, I can add something. Um, well, something that I really liked was also to introduce tango to tango in water to tango dancers, because um, I don't know if there are some tango dancers among among you, but um, this is quite a formal dance. This is super beautiful, but people are already very concerned about how they dance, that it looks beautiful. Um, how can they be best, etc. And then uh, I found it really interesting to start first a kind of improvised tango in the room, in the studio, dance studio, and bringing some 
improvisation principles. So also to introduce new people to tango, like people dancing other form of dances, starting tango, and then going in water. Because then you can really feel the, um, I don't know, the resistance of the water. When you move your legs, for example, you move way more slowly. And um, it is also very nice to change roles between men and women. And also the connection with the music, because then we, we dance a lot on the feet, but we let part of the body float. And it's really a delightful way to, to connect this is, with this kind of dance. And uh, for example, the difference in this kind of dance is it's so difficult to be precise. You can't be exactly on the rhythm like you would be in tango. It's very important to be with the music. So you have to let go of certain exact move, but the connection is super nice. The kind of uh, abrazo you have, you know, the, the way of hugging people is very different. And the magic of it is also you connect in a different way because you always have the water protecting your body. So you don't feel so close, you feel connected and you have a different, different way to connect. You use the hands, but I, I train people to not do this, you know, to, to stay free so that you can move 360 degrees. And, um, and this is really nice. So this is my new thing I like to share in the moment. Or sometimes I also use some principle coming out of uh, Tantra. So how to be very aware of the connection of the boundaries how to communicate, because for me, this is also very important that everyone takes care of uh, feeling emotionally safe. So it's a kind of training also in nonverbal communication. Yeah. Thank you very much, Manuela. 